send it to Baton Rouge, Dave Pash and Greg McElroy, Mississippi State and LSU. Back to back false starts to begin the game for Mississippi State on the road here in Baton Rouge, where they're still buzzing after last week's win over then number two Georgia. The Tigers jump eight spots in the poll back into the top five. Taking on Mississippi State, which has never won a road game against an AP top five team. Quarterback is Nick Fitzgerald, a senior. Going to hand it off here to Kylan Hill on first and 20, and he gets only a couple of yards. Fitzgerald recently passed Tim Tebow, becoming the all-time leading rusher among quarterbacks in SEC history. And in their win over Auburn a couple weeks ago, he carried the ball 28 times for 195 yards, winning SEC Offensive Player of the Week. He'll throw it here, swinging it out to Kylan Hill, ahead of steam up to the 25-yard line. Brought down by Jacob Phillips, the middle linebacker. It'll bring up third down at about 10. Nick Fitzgerald's an elite runner. One of the best we've ever seen in the Southeastern Conference, but throwing the football is going to be a challenge. Third and 10 is going to absolutely kill you if you're Mississippi State going against a secondary like this. LSU brings pressure up the middle. Fitzgerald's pass is intercepted. At the 30-yard line, it's Michael Divinity taking it back inside the 10. Divinity inside the 5. And out of bounds at the 2-yard line. It'll be first and goal, Tigers. Michael Divinity, the best edge rusher for the LSU defense, actually drops off into coverage, and they bring internal pressure. Fitzgerald feels that pressure, throws it right to the middle of the field where Divinity is waiting for it. Great start for this LSU defense. An awful start for Mississippi State's offense. Back-to-back, false -back, start penalties, and then Nick Fitzgerald, who struggled this year as a passer, throws his fourth interception against four touchdowns. From the three-yard line, Joe Burrow hands it off to Brosette, trying to get the corner. And slammed out of bounds by Willie Gay. Linebacker gets him out of play around the one. Second and goal from there. Fellas, just being down here on the field, there is no question. Mississippi State's going to have a hard time with communication. They're going to have a hard time identifying who's coming from where. Really good look there from Dave Aranda on defense. And to your point, Greg, if it's third and seven plus tonight at any time for Mississippi State, they have no chance to win this game. Second and goal, direct step to Edwards. Elair turns it up inside and knocked down by Leo Lewis. Short game, third and goal now for LSU. Ed Ogeron has been very aggressive in these first seven football games. Sudden change opportunity. Your offense gets it on the short field. I happen to think that they have two downs here to get it. Cole Tracy's great at field goal kicker. But I happen to think this is four down territory for the Tigers. Burrow and Brosette are in the backfield now on third and goal. Brosette is in. Touchdown, LSU. So they make the Bulldogs pay for that awful turnover inside their 20-yard line. Tenth rushing touchdown for Nick Brosett leading the SEC. The senior local kid. And Tracy on for the point after. Mississippi State only gives up 13 points per game. That's the fewest in college football. They've already surrendered seven. But that's in big part because of this. Nick Fitzgerald picked off and then paid off by Brosette from two yards out as the Tigers strike first at home. 
Well, you think the players are fired up. How about assistant strength coach Jake Riedel headbutting Racy McMath, drawing blood. <laughs> As if you need a little more motivation to play an SEC game at night here in Death Valley. This will go through the end zone, so a touchback, and Mississippi State will start on the 25. And welcome to the booth. I'm Dave Pash, alongside Greg McElroy, Tom Luganville on the field. Well, we were going to start this telecast by talking about LSU defense. They beat us to the punch with yeah. that interception. Coming off one of the best defensive performances in the country this year with what they did to Georgia. Yeah, it was a vintage LSU defensive performance, and it's a star-powered group. If you look at their personnel, especially in the back seven, it's as good as they've ever had here. If you look in the secondary in particular, Greedy Williams at corner, Christian Fulton on the other side, excellent player, and then Grant Delpit, one of the best safeties in college football. Oh, by the way, Devin White, best middle linebacker in college football. Kylan Hill gets the carry and finds a running lane across the 35. Out past the 40-yard line. It's an 18-yard run. So Nick Fitzgerald from a small town, Richmond Hill, Georgia. Population's around 12,000. He was not recruited coming out of high school. Middle Tennessee and Mississippi State, the only schools looking at him. He ends up succeeding Dak Prescott as the quarterback for the Bulldogs and becoming the all-time leading rusher among quarterbacks in the history of the SEC. So he's wearing that glove on his left hand. We did not see that. We had them a couple weeks ago. He's going to take off here, and he's loose inside the 40-yard line. He's got speed past the 20, and finally, they catch up to him. Grant Delpit gets him at the 17-yard line, a 42-yard run. He sees collapse on the right, thinks about throwing it, says, no, 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 can't do it. Pulls it and goes north and south. And this one, this is when Nick Fitzgerald's really at his best. He's not great sideline to sideline. He's great going north and south. Right there, LSU defense had a little bit of a seam because he looked in the right direction. And there was nothing but green grass ahead for Nick Fitzgerald. LSU has not allowed a first quarter touchdown since the Alabama game week nine of last year. The Bulldogs are threatening in the red zone here with a fresh set of downs. And Fitzgerald takes off again inside the 10. Powers his way down to the four-yard line. Devin White on the stop, but it'll be first and goal for Mississippi State. And this Mississippi State offense is entirely predicated on Nick Fitzgerald running the football. Against Auburn, they went back to what they did all last year. Joe Moorhead said we had to scrap the plan. Nick Fitzgerald just wasn't progressing as a thrower the way we thought he might. So let's do what he does best. In turn, he responds with nearly 200 yards against the solid run defense in the Auburn Tigers. Not easy to do, make that radical switch midseason offensively with philosophy. Fitzgerald again, this time tackled for a loss by Divinity, who had the interception. And Tom, it's really remarkable, and it's, it's a tip of the cap to Joe Moorhead, saying, you know, we got to recognize our deficiencies. Next thing you know, they're a different offense the last few weeks. They have been, and I think a lot of it has to do with Joe Moorhead seeing more man defense in this league than you do maybe in some other places he's been, which takes away the RPO game and puts them into their comfort zone of quarterback run. And Ogeron has his team off to a 6-1 and one start, 3-1 and one in conference. They have three wins against ranked teams all in the top 10 so far this year. Fitzgerald looking for some running room again. He is brought down around the line of scrimmage as he takes a beating. Glenn Logan with the first hit. And this has been a really nice response from Mississippi State. You have to think if they're unsuccessful here probably have to take the points but this is a difficult part of the field to be in you're going into the LSU student section communication at a premium and it's tough to do it in this part of the field we're gonna spread it out here Fitzgerald by himself looks to the sideline for the check and now is brought down again at the line of scrimmage divinity on the stop and mississippi state will settle for a field goal try you have to here guys points are going to come at a premium in this environment it's been tough sledding outside of the big run i really like this call by joe moorhead get his team settled down and get a little confidence it's definitely the correct call and not surprised to see three straight plays essentially all quarterback run with nick fitzgerald going right up the middle 
at 28 carries, as we mentioned two weeks ago, in their win over Auburn. Chrisman puts it through, and the Bulldogs are on the board here in Baton Rouge. Homecoming in Baton Rouge, LSU so dominant here at Tiger Stadium, winning 21 consecutive home games in the month of October, going back to 2009 against Florida. Also tonight, LSU is honoring the past. You see the purple helmets. They're wearing special uniforms to honor the silent season of 1918 when students, instead of playing football, left their homes, their teammates, their families to go serve in World War I. They're really special. No names on the back of the jerseys. Really, really a special tribute that LSU brought out tonight. This will be a touchback, and LSU will start on its 25-yard line. Joe Burrow is the quarterback for the Tigers. He is a junior out of the Plains, Ohio, where he was Mr. Ohio back in 2014. He went to Ohio State. His brothers played at Nebraska. And then his father, Jimmy, with close ties to Frank Solich from his days at Nebraska, has been the defensive coordinator at Ohio for the last 14 years. Burrow never got a chance to start for the Buckeyes, played in 10 games in two years. Ed Ogeron told us yesterday when he heard Burrow was transferring, it took him a second to think about it, and they were on it. Here's Nick Brosette looking for a hole. It's not there. Brought down after a gain of one, backside by Gary Green. And Burrow's been stable. That's probably his best attribute. And some of the things that he does extremely well, you'll never see in a box score. Adjustments at the line of scrimmage and checks. Gonna throw here. Pressure off the edge was picked up, but that pass was high. Greg, he only completes 53% of his passes. And that is a big point of contention. They have to find more completions for him, some easier completions right there. Tried to throw a little bit of a curl route to the left-hand side. It was well covered. He had to throw it outside. And sometimes a throw away is a good play. There's one area that he needs to improve. It's getting through his progressions maybe just a little bit quicker, dialing in the accuracy just a touch, and not taking as many sacks. He has 16 so far this season he's taken. He did have two rushing touchdowns against Georgia last week. Burrow from the pocket. It's juggled and caught, but because it took Jamar Chase an extra second to grab that football. He is short of the line to gain, and it's fourth down, and you would imagine LSU will kick the ball away here. Otherwise, Chase would have had a first down. He was just looking to take off and run before securing the catch, and he would have had a lot of real estate, Greg. Yeah, he did. And they've had some drops now. If you look at the end of the Florida game, there's been a few drops that LSU's had to deal with. You mentioned Joe Burrow's completion percentage. Well, his adjusted completion percentage, if you account for drops and throwaways, is up near 64. So he's been pretty dialed in with the football for the most part. Dedrick Thomas is the deep man here for Mississippi State. Excellent punt. And the fair catch made around the 16-yard line. Nick Fitzgerald wearing that glove on his left hand. We were talking about we haven't got anything yet from Mississippi State as to why, but we were discussing it amongst ourselves. We can't remember ever seeing him wear the glove. Try to get that info for you. As Fitzgerald hands it off to Aris Williams, and he gets maybe two on the play. Joe Moorhead, a Pittsburgh native, son of a steel mill worker, was a four-year head coach at Fordham, and then was hired at Penn State. Did a great job there with the Nittany Lions for James Franklin, the National Offensive Coordinator of the Year twice, took the Mississippi State job when Dan Mullen left to go to Florida. Fitzgerald on the rollout on second and eight. His pass is caught, but a big hit by Christian Fulton on Guidry. It'll be third down. And Moorhead's a great offensive mind. I love the way they just play with lethal simplicity. Everything kind of looks the same, and it's difficult on defensive coordinators. He has concepts that really make it easy on your quarterback in the pass game when they do rely on Nick Fitzgerald's arm. But he's an up-and-coming coach, no doubt. He's done a pretty good job with the veteran group at Mississippi State. What did he say when they lost their, their, those two games? And I said, I forgot to take my coaching pills, but I started taking them again for the Auburn week. Another interception. Delpit picks that off. Fitzgerald's thrown two here in the first quarter. Fourth inter 
interception this season for Grant Delpit, sophomore safety from Houston. Nick Fitzgerald trying to make a play on third down. He looks left and Delpit just undercuts what was a little stick route by the slot receiver. Delpit, such incredible instincts at the safety position. He makes plays like that that are very advanced, look so routine. He's a star. You got no shot to win a game like this. You turn it over twice inside your 25-yard line. And that was bad. Here's a pitch to Brosette. Looking for a cutback lane. It's not there. He's going to lose about three yards. Oh, just following that interception, Joe Moorhead dropped to his knees, looking down at the ground, stood up, looked directly at Nick Fitzgerald and said, you've got to just throw it away. And, you know, it's just you see him throw it low the way there, Greg, but what he's trying to get across to him is if it's not clean, we got to live to play the next down. And now you put your team in a hole by turning it over in plus territory for LSU. Yeah, and LSU is a team that thrives when it wins the turnover margin. They had four takeaways against Georgia last week and won that game by 20. Good job by Mississippi State D, though, with a bounce back on first down. And then on second and 13, the catch made by D. Anderson inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. So they get a chunk there, and it'll bring up third down and manageable, third and four. When you look at the adjustments that Joe Burrow makes at the line of scrimmage, just look. He doesn't look back to the sideline. He doesn't look for Steve Ensminger, his offensive coordinator. He makes the checks himself. And that allows LSU's offense to get into the perfect play and out of a potentially bad play. And the defense doesn't have time to adjust. Joe Burrow's best attribute is just how cerebral he is. He's done a great job of it over the first seven games. Big third and four here. Brosset has the first down to the 11-yard line. Brought down by Mark McLaurin. Brosette has been through so much, an ACL injury his freshman year. His brother passed away, his family house burnt down, his mom has battled cancer. But he is the featured guy as a senior. Pass to the end zone is underthrown and picked off by Cameron Dantzler. He took it out of the end zone, and he's out of bounds at the half-yard line. First of all, it's a great play, but then why run out of the end zone? You're giving it back to your offense inside the one when it should have been at the 20. That's a great play by Dantzler. This is one thing that LSU does very well is throw the back shoulder fade. And this is exactly what Joe Burrow is trying to do right here. Dantzler anticipated it, but why are you taking it out of the end zone? I know you think you have green grass, but my goodness, against a team like this, your offense is struggling. You've got to go down to a knee. That's situational and field awareness. You just made a play that your team had to have. But with the way Nick Fitzgerald has thrown the ball, LSU knows what's coming. They're going to run it. They're going to load it up here in the box. Try to get a safety. Fitzgerald is lined up halfway into the end zone. Gonna hand it off. Hill gets out and brought down at the line of scrimmage. Rashard Lawrence made the tackle second and long. So difficult in this part of the field. If you're a quarterback, you tell your offensive line, hey, we gotta try to go hard count. Maybe we can steal five yards because they jump off sides. And then this is also a possibility, too. We might try to take a chance downfield. For a go around, but based on two safety looks, expect him to try to run it. Fitzgerald gets out of the end zone, and boy, if he doesn't trip over his own guy, Kylan Hill, who was on the ground, and an offensive lineman as well, Fitzgerald had a lot of room there between the hash marks. Has to retie the shoe for third down and about six. Greg, you see how fast those safeties are firing. They're showing a too high look, but when they see that ball go down the middle, they're coming up fast. There they are, and in this particular case, you see the safeties. One, two, too high look to a look like this. 
Fitzgerald keeps it on third and long, and he has the first down. That's big for the Bulldogs, and maybe that'll get Nick Fitzgerald some confidence. It certainly gives him some breathing room now out of his 14-yard line. And a nice look right there. That is actually a little sweep with quarterback power. So that tackle is actually getting pulling to the right-hand side. You're blocking the defensive end with that puller. And Nick Fitzgerald just hits it right inside. It's one of their best plays. That's one they really used an awful lot against Auburn a few weeks ago. It's already got 70 rushing yards. Of course, at 42 on one play. Tylen Hill. Two-yard pickup to the 16. Lawrence hits him first, and that will be the final play of the opening quarter here in Baton Rouge. Well, if you're an LSU fan, could be a lot better. If you're a Mississippi State fan, man, could it be a heck of a lot worse? Only down 7-3 despite two turnovers deep in Mississippi State territory. Divinity with the first pick. Delpit had the other. The Tigers lead 7-3 after a quarter in Death Valley. From 2000 to 2014, LSU won every meeting with Mississippi State. But they've split the last four, including a Bulldogs 37-7 win in Starkville last year. Second and eight for Mississippi State. Fitzgerald going to throw it, and it's batted down by Divinity, who had an interception in the first quarter. Almost a third pick thrown by Fitzgerald. Yeah, Divinity's having a day. They go with a little RPO. In this particular case, when the running back slips into the flat, that gives Fitzgerald the freedom to throw the football. But they actually called a run play there. That's quarterback power. But as soon as that running back slips out and he's free, you can throw it to him. That time, Divinity popped up, knocked the ball down to force third and long. And they run it with Hill, and he's out to the 19-yard line. And Alexander on the tackle, and so Mississippi State leads the SEC in rushing coming into today. And is number two in third downs, but one for six of the game will have to punt it. And you can see right there, that's just a lack of trust in your quarterback. I mean, it's third and long. It's also a lot of respect for LSU secondary. I and mean, that's a really good group that you're facing off against. Every drive that ends in a kick in a game like this is a positive one. In this particular case, it's a punt. Giles is deep. Waits for it on his 40. It is a little bit windy down there and raining as well. He makes the catch at the 42. Yeah, look at that average drive start for LSU. And they're at the 47 here. A pitch to Brosek. Tries to cut it back instead. He is dragged down by Kobe Jones. So it's a gain of one or two. Nick Brosette was a huge question mark. The running back position in general for LSU. Huge question mark for the first time in it feels like a decade. They didn't have a true star at the position returning. Brosette's been a nice surprise. Pressure on Burrow and he goes down. It wasn't a surprise on that play. It was Jonathan Abram. It's a six-yard loss, and so it'll be third down and long for LSU. Yeah, you're going to see Abram coming off the edge, and he's going to be blitzing just like this. You'll see they bring Sam Strong safety, and they are all picked up. Protection sound. Brissett goes low. Abram goes high, and Joe Burrows dropped for the 17th time this season. Abram, very talented from Columbus, Mississippi. Third down and 13. Burrow hit again. Sacked again. First man there was Leo Lewis. Consecutive takedowns of the LSU quarterback. And the Tigers will have to punt. I don't know what happened here. Look at Deculus, all right? He's going to slide inside, and next thing you know, you're going to have movement coming right off the edge. Look at Deculus. Slides inside. And as a result, Leo Lewis has a free run right at Joe Burrow. That's overloading the slide protection, and Deculus has to see that. No need to slide to nowhere. you got to see that presence. And they're going to not chase Von Rosenberg this time. Again, a short punt in traffic. Goes out of bounds around the 25-yard line. Weeks. It continues to rain here at Tiger Stadium. 
This is good field position for Mississippi State based on how this game is going. From the 23-yard line, Fitzgerald will keep it, and he's up to the 30. Excellent first down run for Nick Fitzgerald before Jacob Phillips gets him to the ground. And this is their best run play that they have. They pull that left guard. They kick out the defensive end on the right-hand side. Nick Fitzgerald's reading the linebackers who are unblocked. If they flow hard, he keeps it and goes north and south. That is a play that they've been running an awful lot of these last two games and, and one that seemingly is really working for this offensive line. Got seven yards on first down. Fitzgerald making his 31st career start at quarterback. Runs again. Slips a tackle. And then finally grabbed by Devin White, the outstanding junior linebacker. One of the nation's leading tacklers. But it is a first down for the Bulldogs. Yeah, just quarterback power. You can see. Just pulling that right guard around. You got a lead blocker in Kylan Hill. And... Nick Fitzgerald, if not for the All-American linebacker, had tons of room. But Devin White, that hole closes quickly when number 40's on the field. The Bulldogs begin this drive from their 44. Again, Fitzgerald will run, takes on a defensive lineman, and Glenn Logan gets him to the ground. Logan, a sophomore, who lives with teammate Richard Lawrence, and Richard acts like either his big brother or his dad he goes Richard goes to bed at 9 30. <laughs> so he makes Logan go to bed about the same time and make sure his homework's done before he goes to bed at night kind of like you and me with Greg yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's 9 30 a.m. though unfortunately Fitzgerald going to throw here, and over the middle, almost intercepted again. It was Greedy Williams stepping in front. Third down and five. Already two picks for Fitzgerald and a couple of pass breakups that were nearly picked off. Oh, my goodness. Nick Fitzgerald missed a huge opportunity. Watch number two right here, and watch how he breaks it out to the flat. There's nobody home. I mean, if he just looks to his left, there is nobody within 15 yards of Dedrick Thomas. Man. That was a big missed opportunity by Nick Fitzgerald as he forced it into tight coverage. Mississippi State, one of the best third down teams in college football, but not tonight. Fitzgerald throwing again. He's got time. Batted down. Fourth down. Glenn Logan got a paw on it. LSU going to get it back. And a nice job by Glenn Logan. Look, if you're not going to get there, if you're a defensive lineman, you're not going to make the sack, you might as well stop your rush and put your arm up as the quarterback releases the ball. Glenn Logan recognizing that he's still four yards away from Fitzgerald as he's getting ready to sling it, puts that big right paw up and knocks the ball down. Great play by the defensive end. Tucker Day has it go through his hands, but he scoops it up and gets rid of it. And it'll go out of bounds around the 28-yard line, averting disaster, Adnan. 3.29 to play. Two timeouts left for LSU. Joe Burrow has struggled throwing the ball, but this pass is on target. And the six foot seven Stephon Sullivan able to break some tackles. Out to the 40-yard line, an 11-yard gain. I like that throw, Greg. Give Joe Burrow a little confidence. Get this crowd re-energized. And now maybe you get some tempo going. As Steve Ensminger, the offensive coordinator, you're inside of three minutes here in just a moment. You want to start cranking things up a little bit. Yeah, that was a good throw, and that's a safe throw. Yep. Something out to the perimeter. Your biggest body-wide receiver. You can't miss that guy. It's 6'7". Yeah. So I like the play call by Steve Ensminger. That was their longest play of the night, 11 yards. They'll run it. And Brosette is whacked. Jeffrey Simmons in the backfield, able to hit him first, and then Leo Lewis cleans him up. You got to try it, right? I mean, you got to try to run the between the tackles, but it's just so hard against that guy. Yeah, Although really he's hurt. Yeah, it really is. And they need him on that defensive line to get healthy and get back in the game soon. Look at this 26 yards for LSU, and they lead 7 3 last time. 20 or less you go back to 2011 they ended up winning that game and they might win this one again their touchdown drive started on the Mississippi State three Burrow taking a deep shot here and an over the 
shoulder attempt, but Dillon can't come up with it. So the clock is stopped, 208 to go. Third and 10 now for LSU. Oh man, this is one Joe Burrow wants back. Oh, you're throwing the, to a wide open wide receiver. He has Abram beat. That's the matchup you want. You have Dylan against a safety who's really a better run player than he is cover guy. And you throw it outside. You got to throw it up the field when you're throwing a go route. Man, missed opportunity there for the LSU quarterback. So third down and 10. We'll see if Mississippi State comes after Joe Burrow here. We'll keep an eye right here. That looks like a pressure look. Potentially drops out wide open first down catch Derek Dillon to the 40 yard line. They show pressure on the right they bring pressure on the left. You might fool me up here in the booth but you're not going to fool Joey Burrow. He recognizes it throws into the disappearance and converts a big third down. You know, Greg, you were talking about today that LSU wants to run the ball. They need to run the ball, but they don't necessarily have the right personnel to run the ball the way they want to. That's why they're more of a one-back, one-tight end team now, because they don't have the tight ends to be a two-tight end team. Burrow, short throw, bro set, drilled after he makes the catch by Jamal Peters. Inbound, so the clock is moving here. I wonder if they should go back to their perimeter passing game. I think that's their only chance to get themselves in space and still have it be a safe throw for Mississippi State in the second half. Quarterback run, Burrow. And he heads for the sideline. Got hit by McLaurin, but it was not a late hit. He's still in bounds, so he's out of bounds at the 36. Cole Tracy, their kicker, has made a 54-yarder this year. Good no call there, but you've got a kicker who has made a 54 yarder. Right now, he's the leading active guy in college football in terms of made field goals, but most of those came at a Division II school in Worcester, Massachusetts. He used to kick in front of 1,200 people. Now he kicks in front of 102,000, and he's pretty darn good. He's missed only twice this year in 19 attempts. He cooks and kicks in front of 1,200 people at practice. <laughs> They run it on third and six, and Brosset able to power his way to the marker. See if he got it. Looks like he did based on the spot. It is a first down. Clock moving, and the Tigers. Clock will start and ready for play. Tigers will hold on to that timeout for now. Eighth play of the drive. Burrow going to throw it over the middle. Caught near the 20-yard line, and another first down, D. Anderson. And this is the part of the field, too, and in this situation, you can take a shot or two towards the end zone. Plenty of time, run your offense. You're well inside a field goal range now. Burrow, and throws that one either away, or the receiver just ran the wrong route. Stephon Sullivan, so the clock is stopped with 48 seconds to go. You know, Greg, you watch these corners for Mississippi State, and they're dropping and bailing with their back to the sideline and their eyes to the quarterback. So it's tough to take a shot because you've got safety over the top and a sinking type of technique from the corners. Well, those are tough, tough throws, especially when you've already thrown an interception on a ball just like that against that coverage. Yeah, but against that, I'd like to throw a little slant and go, a little sluggo potentially, maybe at the top where you have off coverage and eyes inside. Burrow to throw again on second down, leaving the pocket. His pass to the sideline is caught. And out of bounds is Anderson. He's short of the marker. 42 seconds to go. Let's see if he got a foot down. He did. It's a good catch and a great tackle by Tom Luganville on the sideline. And then they run it here and get the first down. That'll stop the clock. They'll get rid of the chains. And they'll hold on to that timeout. This is by far LSU's best offensive possession tonight. Closing it on 30 seconds to go. Burrow to the end zone. And it is behind the receiver. Incomplete. Going for Derek Dillon. Interesting there. Throw a fade to the 5'11 guy when he got a 6'7 guy. That's clearly a matchup that they like, though. Derek Dillon in the slot, working against man coverage, trying to get little slot fade they had one second ago down the left hand side just not in the condensed field Broom misses it again 
12 plays on this drive where they had 22 about an average of three plays per drive in their first seven possession on second and goal Burrow again over the middle and it's incomplete unable to hang on was Jefferson that's a couple times now Jefferson hasn't been able to come up with it or he's Smitherman in coverage so it is third down and goal yeah, and it's just right in the chest. I know it's wet. I know it's raining. I know that ball's moving quickly, but these LSU wide receivers just haven't been real consistent catching it. Been a bunch of drops this season and obviously had a few tonight. Do you run it here? Do you hand it off? And if nothing else, you still have possession. You set yourself up for three points. You get the ball at halftime, so you can go two for one. But no, I'm throwing. I'm taking a chance. Try to steal seven as opposed to three. And instead it is Burrow running, and he's going to get to the middle of the field, but tackled around the seven-yard line. So Ed Ogeron playing it safe there. Now based on how Burrow turned it over in the red zone in the first quarter, you understand why they elected to do it. Maybe a trick him, and he makes it to the end zone, but this way you put your kicker in the middle of the field, and you're almost certain to get three. But with a wet football, you never know. And so Cole Tracy, we were talking about when he kicked at Assumption College, it was such a small venue, the net was so low that he kept kicking it over the net into the parking lot. They'd start the game with eight footballs, and by the end, they only had one left. <laughs> you can see just how different they are. Enrollment, the history, the wins, and the capacity just slightly, just slightly more here in in Death Valley. They mauled him when he kicked that game winner here or at Auburn at 42 yarder to knock off the Tigers. This will be a 25 yard try. And he puts it through. And LSU extends the lead to seven. The Tracy family loving it. Those are three big points and what looks like we're going to be headed for a low scoring game. Tigers by seven at halftime. 10-3 they lead Mississippi State. Now it's Adnan Berg, Joey Galloway, Jesse Palmer back in the studio. LSU with a 10-3 lead. Two interceptions, one that led to a touchdown by Nick Brosette in the opening three minutes of the game. The only touchdown of a rain-filled first half here in Baton Rouge. They pass Greg McElroy, Tom Luganbill. LSU, despite only 79 yards of total offense, has the lead as the Tigers look to go to 7 and 1, ranked fifth in the country. They've got Alabama in two weeks in their next game. This will be a touchback and come out to the 25 for the Tigers. Play action on first down for Burrow, and a long throw to the sideline. It's pulled in at the 35 yard line. Justin Jefferson, who had a couple drops in the first half. I like that. Go to the kid to start the third quarter. Yeah, but to get your quarterback into rhythm, I mean, my goodness, that is a long, difficult throw. And Burrow made it look easy. Really nice timing on the comeback and a great catch by Jefferson, who had a bit of an up and down first half with a couple drops. That's his first grab of this game, 28 on the season. Both of his brothers, Jordan and Ricky, played at LSU. Rosette cuts it back and gets to the outside. How about his quarterback Burrow out there blocking for him? Burrow goes tumbling down and out of bounds is the running back Brosette after a 12 yard game. How about the quarterback? This is why you carry out your fake. All right, look, he's just gonna go in here and become a lead blocker. You know, it's not often that you want Burrow and as your fullback. That's to be expected, but good hustle by the quarterback. Brosette breaks the tackle. Brought down by Simmons at midfield. That's a pickup of about four. That was all Brosette right there, Greg. When you watch Montez Sweat, number nine, come off the ball with the inside move on 76 Austin Deculus. That should have been a negative play. Really nice job by Brosette. Off play action, batted down by Landrews. 
and Landrews is in for the injured Ryan Cole. You can't see him on the screen right here, but he's blitzing off the edge, number 11. Just like we talked about in the first half, if you can't get home on the blitz or a pass rush situation, stop, survey what the quarterback's doing, jump, and try to knock the ball down. Good job right there for Landrews. You mentioned Cole, he's out due to injury, transfer from Michigan. Landrews is a junior from Summit, Mississippi. Third down and six for LSU. Burrow got a receiver wide open. Jefferson, and he has the first down. Marcus Murphy on the tackle. But they move the chains in Mississippi State territory. And a nice throw by Joe Burrow. Throwing that out route to the left for a right-handed quarterback. I also like it, too. You you see how they have that stack alignment. That creates separation for the wide receivers. It's good design right there from Steve Ensminger, the offensive coordinator. Edwards Elair gets the carry, and he's bottled up after a gain of two. Guys, what, what's adjustments did Steve Ensminger make here because the last two possessions look a lot different for LSU. They've been able to drive the ball in Mississippi State where they couldn't do anything the first quarter of the game. Well, they're coming out and throwing it on first down and that's softening up what Mississippi State's doing with their safeties and their corners. Rosette again and he's dragged to the ground by Chauncey Rivers after a short gain. So let's see if Mississippi State can hold LSU to three as Sweat jogs on the field for the Bulldogs along with Simmons who was shaken up in the first half and maybe that's the reason he was on the bench for the first couple plays there. It'll be interesting too to see what Steve Ensminger calls here. I mean you're well inside Cole Tracy's range. You want to stay aggressive and Burrow's been pretty good at the end of the second quarter and here early in the third, but might opt to run it too, depending on what the box count looks like. Third and six, Burrow will throw it, and it's caught but short of the sticks. Pulled in by Jefferson. It's fourth down and three, and LSU will bring on Cole Tracy. It's very clear, Tom, that they are very concerned about these pass rushers for Mississippi State. They're getting the ball out of Joe Burrow's hands really quickly on third down. Yeah, they really are. And, you know, that throw right there doesn't kill you. I think it probably puts the ball where Cole Tracy would prefer to have it, as he will now aim for the D in Death Valley above the Big H. Right, that's what he stares at. Very good, Luke. He's only missed twice all year, and both those misses were beyond 50. It was right at the H. That's when it crossed the uh, crossbar that time. <laughs> Pretty good. It's 13-3 LSU. So there you see Colt Tracy. He's looking up at the D in Death Valley. That's his target. When he, when he was at Assumption, he, he was looking at a tree off in the distance. Here he's looking at uh, the D there. His eyes set on that, and he makes the field goal. It's 13-3, and this will be a touchback. We checked him with that name Burke. So here's a pitch to Kylan Hill on first down with running room. Past the 35 and hanged out of play at the 42, a gain of 17. So look at teams with LeBron James compared to what they did the previous year. Now that first year 04, that's his rookie year. Then he goes and joins Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh with the Heat. They win 11 more games, lose to the Mavericks in 2011, and then with the Cavaliers in 2015, they win 20 more games. Lakers won 35 games last year. Very tough to even make the playoffs in the Western Conference. Fitzgerald keeps it here. Up to the 46, drags three Tigers. Gain of four, here's Tom. Hey guys, uh, you know, Coach Moore had really felt like the responsibility was on him to do a better job to help Nick Fitzgerald. He said we've got to RPO them more and we've got to make sure we move the pocket a little bit if we've got to throw the football. I can't just have him sitting back there and throwing the ball when he's not comfortable in the drop back game. Yeah, the first half he was three of nine with two interceptions. He did rush for over 100 yards though, Tom, in that opening half. Hill, nowhere to go. Does well to get back to the line of scrimmage. Devin White was bearing down on him. White, leading tackler for LSU, number three in the SEC. He rides horses in his uh, spare time. Is that Kylan Hill is injured on the play. 
White owns seven different horses. That how, that's how he winds down normally after a game, gets on his horse. Third and ten, so you saw Hill leave. Harris Williams is in. LSU showing a blitz here on the bottom of your screen. They back off. It's Gerald going to run it. And he runs into a teammate. He'll come up short of the first down. They might go for it again on fourth down. It's too long for a field goal with Chrisman. Do you go for it here again? Definitely. Now, if you're going to go for it between the 45 and the 50, you got to go for it here. And that's a big reason why I think Joe Moorhead went with a quarterback draw right there to at least make this fourth down attempt a little more manageable. And this may be a spot, Greg, where, as Coach Moorhead said, maybe we move the pocket a little bit. Give him a run-pass option on the perimeter if the pass isn't there. Fourth down and three. Or maybe they're trying to get, well, thought they might be trying for an offside. Fitzgerald in trouble. He gets out of it. Now being chased inside. Delphi gets him down. Boy, it didn't look like Fitzgerald saw that LSU player coming in the backfield. And Grant Delpit, one of the best playmakers in college football at the safety position, comes up huge on fourth down, bringing down Fitzgerald, and Joe Moorhead doesn't love it, but on the other sideline, oh, is fired up. Welcome back to ESPN Saturday Prime College Football, presented by Hampton by Hilton. Mississippi State turns it over on downs, and LSU has the ball on its 45-yard line, leading 13-3. Ohio State transfer quarterback Joe Burrow hands it off on a jet sweep to Dillon, and he is brought down by Sweat, but a flag is down. Personal foul, face mask, grasping the helmet open and out the runner. Number nine defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. You can see Sweat reaching. It looks like he grabbed the face mask with his right hand as he comes around. Kind of see it? I mean, that's... Man, man I don't know. I thought he got the shoulder there. It looks like the shoulder pad. And right his there. hand's inside that that collar. And that was, that was tough luck on Montez Sweat. Looked like he made a great play. Sweat comes back and grabs Edwards Elair at the 40 yard line, so no gain. That was a great play right there, my Montez Sweat. It really was, Greg. Yeah, it was. <laughs> he just absolutely put Austin Deculus, the right tackle, six yards in the backfield, and Sweat grabs Elair. Burrow back to throw, and his pass is on target. Jamar Chase, the true freshman, has the first down. Burrow has been uh, Burrow has been so much better since that interception in the first quarter. Yeah, and off coverage like this, just run a little speed out. Ten yards, rolling to twelve. When there's no disruption in the rhythm, you can make those throws look easy. Back to the ground game, getting outside. Edwards Elair spins. Brought down by McLaurin. Let's see where they spotted his boy. You saw McLaurin go high in the air. I don't know if that was intentional by LSU or not, or if he just collided with an LSU player. It's a little dramatic yeah. to me. It's like McLaurin was trying to draw an unsportsmanlike, and the official didn't take the bait. Second and one. Keep it on the ground and get a first down with Edwards Elay. If you're Mississippi State at this point, is really a must-stop possession if LSU scores a touchdown. I know there's a quarter and three, four minutes remaining, but obviously they only have three points and they have not really moved the ball at all since that opening possession after the interception anyway when they drove it down the field, had to settle for three when they got first and goal. A very important set of downs right here for this Mississippi State defense. Play fake for Burrow. Burrow throws high. 
tried for six foot seven inch Stefan Sullivan and it's hard to miss him unless you throw it seven feet seven inches which is what he did. And Tom I've been impressed with Steve Ensminger the offensive coordinator for LSU. I really like their plan so far in the second half. Yeah not as heavy on the run game putting a little bit more in Joe Burrow's hands. He's responded to the challenge. Yeah and we've seen a little more motion maybe some more formational things in terms of shifts and then Joe Burrow really the essence of it as he's been more accurate as a whole. They're the best SEC team in the red zone Tom and they get second and ten after that incompletion. They run it here Edwards Elair. He gets level. Big hit by Errol Thompson a couple of yards downfield. It puts LSU in third and long. Last couple times down in the red zone in obvious passing situations LSU has actually opted to run the football. They ran a quarterback draw with Joe Burrow at the end of the half. They ran the ball a little bit earlier knowing that Cole Tracy is automatic. And knowing that this pass rush is very dangerous they might opt to do it again. Depending on how the formation looks defensively. It's a pistol formation here with the quarterback Burrow. And it is a quarterback run finding a running lane is Burrow. He got smacked though by Thompson and did not get the first down. It's fourth and two and LSU will bring on the kicking team. Yeah, a smart play call by Steve Ensminger. Well, obviously you want to score touchdowns you want to stay aggressive but and field goals in a game like this yep. points are at a premium of huge. Yep. Burrow already threw one first half red zone interception. Don't take that chance especially knowing that your offensive line is occasionally leaky and this Mississippi State defensive front can get after the passer. I think Tracy has been so good all year. 19 of 21 and both his misses were beyond 50 yards. This is a 29 yard attempt. And it is true again to make it 16 to 3. Tigers late in the third quarter. Death Valley looking to claim another victim. It's a 16 3 LSU lead. And a kickoff that will go through the back of the end zone for a touchback. It's going to be a pass and it's incomplete intended for Dedrick Thomas. They've been showing that as a run and now a flag comes in really late flag by the line judge but they weren't showing that as a run all day. That time Fitzgerald pulled it back but I'm not sure why that flag was thrown so late on the sideline. It's a sideline warning sideline warning on the home team LSU that is their first and only of the game. So it's not a penalty it's still second down and ten and Coach O saying don't do that again. <laughs> Please get back. <laughs> That's exactly what he said. Coach O very fiery man. It's really contagious when you watch the energy that he provides not just on game day but in practice too man. He is all the way turned up every single time he's on a football field. Fitzgerald running on second and ten goes high in the air breaks a tackle and they finally get him down at the 45 yard line. Really Divinity That's couldn't bring him down. You see Kylan Hill. A very good player for Mississippi State shaken up on the last series so that's why Williams is in the game and you're seeing Fitzgerald continue to run the football yeah, and he was grabbing that left hamstring a little bit as he was going to the sideline it just looked very odd I'm curious to see what the prognosis is but definitely a big loss for Mississippi State if he can't return Williams only got 29 carries all season coming into this game because Hill was the feature back on third and two. Fitzgerald throws it and it's dropped. Farad Green couldn't hang on. So there's 16 minutes left in the game. You're in your own territory, and Joe Moorhead going to punt it here and trust his defense to get the ball back for his offense in a short time. It's just amazing how little respect LSU is paying to the pass. If you look at their defensive formations, almost everybody is within 10 yards yep. of the neutral zone and there's eight nine guys in the box every snap checks Nader angles it and it checks up and LSU will have it around the 27 yard line. Let's take a look back at our Buick drive recap the first couple minutes of the game consecutive fall starts by Mississippi State then Nick Fitzgerald is picked off by Michael Divinity he returns it inside the five yard line of the three 
And then LSU with the only touchdown of the game. It was Nick Grosset on third down, getting it in from about a yard out. And now with the field goals by Cole Tracy, we're at 16-3 in the final minute of the third. Here's Brosette trying to get around the end. He does. Pushed out of play by Jamal Peters. It's a good pickup on first down. Very good. And it's really going to come down to this Mississippi State defense. And they got to make a play for their offense. They forced the turnover early on the interception of Joe Burrow, but they got to get another one. If you look at their offense, they've just really struggled. Outside of the first drive of the game or second drive of the game, they haven't done much consistently on offense all night. Their defense. They're going to need to make a play for him if they want to win this one. And don't forget LeBron James and the Lakers against the Rockets coming up next on ESPN. LeBron's Staples debut as a Laker. Brosette on second down, gets the first down. Billy Gay on the takedown, but it's a fresh set of downs when we start the fourth quarter. And isn't this what Ed Orgeron wants out of his football team? Get late, get into the fourth quarter, and all of a sudden you're running it. We'll see if they continue to lean on Mississippi State when we start the fourth. The Tigers are in command, looking to get to 7-1 and one and keep their college football playoff hopes alive. LSU leading 16-3 over Mississippi State. They run Brosette on first down, and he picks up a couple of yards. I know gold and purple, a popular color here, obviously, but you don't see a lot of Laker jerseys in Baton Rouge, but they're everywhere now with LeBron James. If you look at his debut, a loss to Portland Thursday night, 26 points on 16 shots, 12 boards. His home debut next against the Houston Rockets. He's got a good core, man. Kyle Kuzma, one of the most underrated rookies, Lonzo Ball. I'm, I Look might hop on the Lakers bandwagon this year. Why not? Brandon Ingram. Well, they got some characters there, too, with Rondo and Stevenson and JaVel McGee. We'll see how that works out as Brosette comes up just short of the first down. But very good run on second and seven of six yards. It'll be third and one. Let's see if Lugs will jump in here with some NBA knowledge. <laughs> yeah, because LeBron should be playing in the defensive front for Mississippi State right now. What a fake by Burrow, and he gets the first down. Mississippi State trying to rip the ball out. By the way, speaking of Joe Burrow, speaking of Joe Burrow, LeBron has nothing on Joe Burrow's grandmother. His grandmother, Dot, averaged 54 points per game in high school. Oh, my goodness. 54? It's unbelievable. Grandpa was pretty good, too, James. He was the starting point guard here at Mississippi State from 1949 to 52, but the grandma dot could school him. <laughs> Third, look at that, 1,481 points. How long were the quarters? That is amazing. <laughs> 54 points. Oh, my God. To average that. From the 45, Burrow off play action. Going downtown. Caught inside the 30 by Edward Elay. Again, they're trying to rip it out. They blew it dead. Forward progress stopped at the 25-yard line. The first down for the Tigers, a gain of 20. Really interesting design. You see the play action fake. Usually, that running back just running out in the flats. You know, two or three yard outlet throw. Instead, they say Edwards Elair. No, you go right past the linebacker level and go on a go route. It's a nice design from Steve Ensminger. The offensive coordinator and a really nice throw by Joe Burrow off play action. LSU with a chance to put it away. Ball on the ground, maybe. No, he kept it. It looked like it, he lost the ball, but he somehow secured it with Montez Sweat bearing down on him and Errol Thompson. Did a good job just to get back to the line of scrimmage. I know that this is not a pretty play by any stretch. This is a great play for a quarterback. I know it doesn't seem that way. Like, you bobble the ball, it's bad. But don't make a bad play worse. So many times we've seen LSU quarterbacks just right there, all spin around, throw the ball behind him. So many quarterbacks make mistakes and they lose games. Catastrophic plays are what they're called. Joe Burrow doesn't do that. And as a result, he's six and one, staring his seventh win right in the eye. He'll run it here. And gets a couple. 
Willie Gay there first, so third and long, but the clock is uh, LSU's friend right now with Mississippi State's ineptitude in the passing game. So even if they get three more points, make it 19 3. See what they do on third and nine. Well, this is all about running between the tackles and maintaining field position advantage. Two things that Mississippi State has not been able to accomplish the entire game tonight. This is a heavy run formation. Just imagine maybe a little power inside to the right. They run it on third and nine. And Brosette brought down at the 22 yard line. Now here comes Cole Tracy. So this is Cole Tracy pregame. I mean, this guy was kicking at a D2 school in Worcester, and now he's taking pictures with, with co-eds here in, in Baton Rouge. It's unbelievable, man. I mean, he's won a chance to, to kick at the highest level. This is it. He's done a terrific job. Three for three tonight, 20 of 22 on the season. This one hugs the left upright and is good. The legend continues. Coach Facey's parents loving it. He won the game against Auburn with a walk-off 42-yarder. He was 5 for 5 against Georgia last week. And he's perfect tonight, 4 of 4. Greg McElroy, Tom Luganville, Dave Pash in Baton Rouge. LSU's next game after tonight is Alabama here on November 3rd. They've got a 19-3 commanding lead on Mississippi State. It'll be a touchback. They'll come out to the 25-yard line. And at this point, Nick Fitzgerald's got to start throwing the ball, right? You got 10 minutes to go. He runs it here. He's one for his last nine passing. He picks up four. And by the way, if the folks in Pullman were trying to sell college game day on coming back, they did a heck of a job. What a scene, man. That was unbelievable. As good as it, it that college game is the best. We know that. <laughs> There's some episodes that just stand out. Today was one of those episodes. On second and six, Fitzgerald throws, juggled and incomplete. He tried to hit Mixon and carry Vincent with good coverage that time. Third down and six. Pretty decent throw. I take that back. Not a good throw. Uh, no, way behind. behind. I thought everything. it was a little closer than that, but from that angle, you could tell way off the mark. Very difficult for the wide receiver to turn his body as momentum's taking him to the right, to turn his body all the way back around and try to make that catch. And yet another obvious passing situation for Mississippi State when their quarterback is very cold through the air. Look at that. One for 12, and they're number one in the SEC coming into tonight. Third and six. Fitzgerald leaving the pocket. Almost intercepted on the sideline. It's fourth down. And Mississippi State will punt the ball. Fourth and six. Boy, I don't know at this point. I, I know you're backed up, but it's 19-3. I mean, how many more possessions are you going to get? Defense is still your strength, so you have to punt it here. I mean, if you go for it here, maybe if it was fourth and one, you think about it, but not in fourth and six. Not with the way your quarterback's currently throwing it. But by the time you get the ball back, there might only be four minutes on the clock if LSU just runs it. Fair caught around the 29-yard line as Giles goes to the ground. LSU ball again when we come back. But how about Purdue? A shocker over Ohio State. And they've been they've been cruising in the right direction for a while. Purdue, after an 0-3 start, seems to have all the pieces working. Tigers just keep it simple here and run Edwards E. Lair to try to milk the clock. Mississippi State has two timeouts remaining. And they're gonna use one here. Here's Edwards Elair on the carry out to the 32. Gain of a couple. Again, Mississippi State can stop the clock one more time, and we'll do it here. What do you do, guys, if you're if you're Joe Moorhead as a coach, you know? You can go ahead, Tom. Continue. Yeah, you're almost coaching in fear of your quarterback 
and if you don't win on first and second down, you're hamstrung. What what do you do as a play caller? And I listen, I played quarterback, Greg played quarterback, I've coached quarterbacks. I this is a unique situation. I don't know if I've in recent memory, and Greg, you may disagree, have ever seen a team that is so one-sided and one-dimensional and has no answer in the other areas. Yeah, I mean, down in this game from the beginning, never having a lead, and yet you are three quarters running the football when it comes to your play count, or two thirds, whatever it may be. I mean, it's, they have to figure out something. But what happened, guys? Because last year, he could throw the ball, couldn't he? But not consistently. He's never been a consistent thrower, and his wide receivers, too, that group's got to improve as well. There's not a lot of separation. I mean, I don't know where the answers are. Are we taking something away from the LSU defense with this conversation? I mean, I get it. Nick Fitzgerald has struggled as Edwards Elair runs the ball here and is pushed back. Mississippi State can't stop the clock. But LSU's defense. What they did to Georgia and what they're doing to Mississippi State tonight. Oh, they're for real. I mean, there's no denying that, but this has been a long time coming. I mean, Nick Fitzgerald hasn't played well against any defense outside of Auburn when he ran the ball very efficiently. So it's definitely a great group he's playing against tonight, but but the inefficiencies at the quarterback spot for Mississippi State, when that's such a premier position in that offense, they got to find a way to solve some of those problems. You're going to take the game clock down and the play clock as well. Thomas lets it bounce and again checks up. Mississippi State will have the ball around its 33 yard line. As Fitzgerald throws it deep. Overshoots the receiver incomplete. <laughs> Fitzgerald has a completion and trying to get out of bounds as Mitchell and he does to stop the clock with 40 seconds to go. No, Dave, you're thought he stopped the clock anyway. They're rolling it. Uh, you're asking if, if we've diminished the performance of LSU's defense. I love their plan tonight. I thought on first and second down, some of the things they did to walk a guy late down into the box, but show a light box and still play the run. And then, Greg, you mentioned earlier on third down, load the box with seven and eight, dare Mississippi State to throw it. I thought they had a fantastic plan with really good players as well. But again, Devin White will not be available for the first half against Alabama, as that is a completion for a first down to Justin Johnson because of that targeting call. Fitzgerald with a long throw off the mark, incomplete. How many wins for the Lakers this year? Since you've already, you got the roster breakdown earlier. I'm, well, I'm going to say they're going to be. The I'm going to say they're going to be the four seed in the West. And the West is brutal, obviously. Golden State. Needs no explanation. Uh, I'm going to say they're the four seed in the West, and they make it to the Western Conference Finals where they will fall in four to Steph Curry and the all-star team that is in the Bay Area. Well, last year you had, Golden, you had Houston one, Golden State two, and then about two games separated three from nine. So if they win in the upper 40s, there's a chance of that happening as Thomas breaks a tackle, has pushed out of bounds. And Golden State adds a... A top 10 player in the NBA in Boogie Cousins. Look at, look at you. I mean, it's man. ridiculous. I like the NBA. I do. I really, really like the NBA. Question is, when is DeMarcus Cousins going to be ready? I know fans are saying as long as he's ready for the playoffs, that's all that matters. But Steve Kerr would love to have, and talking with Steve a couple weeks ago, he'd love to have time yeah. for Boogie to be integrated and get used to playing with the other All-Stars. Fitzgerald. Just dumps it off here. Gibson gets the first down. But Dave, why is Kawhi Leonard re resting? <laughs> well, he was, that was last year. He's, he's been hurt. <laughs> he's been hurt. So I understand. Yes. Second game of back-to-back -back early in the year. So he's resting tonight. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I know I Toronto is Greg's or is a Tom's pick to Catch come up, out of the Dave. East. No, I'm, I'm going Boston. Boston <laughs> out of the East. Kyrie, Brad Stevens is an X factor as a coach. We're in Boston against Golden State for the championship. And Golden State, I'll make a real bold prediction after they went 16 and 1 last year and route to the championship. They're going to go 16 and 0 in the playoffs this year. Ooh. As they go. Before titles in five years for the Warriors, Fitzgerald takes off inside the 20-yard line and down to the 16th. 
Here's the only thing you guys were asking earlier about making a change. If Joe Moorhead was going to make a change and go to Keaton Thompson, wouldn't you put him in now and let him kind of play out the game? And you'd probably do it on the bye week, too. But he was coming off of a great performance, Nick Fitzgerald was. Probably a performance that that led to him continuing to be the starter. But Keaton's played very well when he's gone in. And he might need to give it a look at some point. They really might. Gibson can't hang on. Tom, I'm never going to be one that that hoots and hollers for a quarterback swap, but right, there's just no progress being made by Nick Fitzgerald. Yeah, there isn't. There just he has not gotten better in the passing game. And listen, this is generally an RPO-based offense. They've had to go away from that, and they've gone to what he does well. But you're going to have to have something to to, to complement that. And Nick Fitzgerald right now can't provide it. Fitzgerald, another interception. It's Delpit with a second. Fifth pick of the year for Delpit. And four interceptions by Fitzgerald. Although at the end here, you're just trying to force it in there. It's not shocking you're going to get picked. You're trying to make something happen. Yeah, I mean, it's a stat stuffer for Delpit, for sure. It was a good play by him, breaking on the late throw by Fitzgerald, man, but you got to figure out a way to move the ball through the air. I mean, Joe Moorhead is an offensive guru, no denying that. He's got to find an answer. Burrow takes a knee right at 40 seconds, and that should do it. The LSU Tigers beat their fourth ranked team this season and next up will be number one after a bye the Tigers will welcome Alabama to Death Valley LSU will go to four and one in conference play seven and one overall and Joe Burrow threw an interception in the red zone in a tight game early on, but was really good after that. Deserves a lot of credit for where the Tigers are at this point in the season. Get out of the field and top. Well, coach, a tale of two has for you on offense in the second half. What was the message at halftime? Was it scheme? Was it mindset? What was it? You know, just had the block up front. Uh, get rid of the ball quick. Catch the football and move down the field. We went to outside zone scheme. Great job by offensive coordinator Steve Insmega. A big win for our team. You know what's coming on defense with a game like this and a quarterback run game like Mississippi State. So how proud are you of your kids and how they perform tonight? I'm proud of our guys. Nick Fitzgerald is one of the best players I've seen in college football. They got a great scheme. Uh, kudos to our defensive staff and all our defense for holding them for three points. Big one in two weeks. Yeah. You guys will be ready, won't you? Yeah, we will. We're going to enjoy tonight, though. All right, thanks, Coach. Go Tigers. Right. And they should enjoy it. It was an impressive performance by LSU. 19-3, they beat Mississippi State. Coming up next, Michelle Beadle and company with NBA Countdown. Beadle, take it away. <laughs> LeBron and the Lakers.